The Lord be with you. I extend a welcome to one and all as we gather together on this holy day of worship and uh, glad to see that you're here even if it is rainy today. But you know what happens when it rains? The internet goes out. So I can't tell our internet friends that they're not going to be able to see us this morning, but the service will be taped and will be available at a later date. Oh well. Please take note of the announcements in the bulletin. Today is the first Sunday of the month in which we receive an offering for sharing and caring. Uh, and there's a basket out in the narthex to receive that. Next Sunday is Silver Sunday. And you are encouraged to, br to bring any of your silver or any coins that look like they're silver, because I don't think they're silver anymore. So uh, that is for uh, uh, mission as well. So please remember that for next week. Please take a note of the announcement about the special congregational meeting to be held on September 25th. Uh, that will be the day that the nominating committee will be presenting names for the new class of elders, the class of 2025. Uh, I thought there was one other announcement. Oh well, it'll come to me later. We do have one, two, well, one announcement, I guess, or two introductions. Uh, this is a special day in the life of the congregation, and Kim is going to share those introductions with you now. Good morning. I have two introductions today. After lots of due diligence, the interim committee, which was Krisha Brister, Lila Mandel, and myself, have selected a candidate, and after a vote by the session, we now have an interim minister. We welcome our new interim pastor, John Stringer. Here is some information that will help you get to know him and his family. John was born and raised in Houston, Texas. He learned about faith in a warm and nurturing family and church. His parents were Marvin and Melvis Stringer, both now deceased. He has three sisters and one brother. He is married to Mary Nell Stringer of New Bern, North Carolina. They have been married for over 40 years. They have two sons, Jordan Stringer of Nashville, Tennessee, and Seth Stringer of Fort Walton Beach. They have one grandson, Wyatt Stringer. John was educated to be a pastor at Union Theological Seminary in Virginia, now Union Seminary. He graduated with a Doctor of Ministry degree. He has served as ministry, in ministry as solo pastor of a small church, associate pastor for youth and singles, associate pastor for congregational care, campus minister, senior pastor, and head of staff and interim pastor. He loves being a pastor. He has been trained to be an interim pastor. He prefers the church to address him simply as John, but is at ease in your addressing him in a way that is comfortable for you. Both John and Mary Nell are excited about this new call. John believes he has a strong sense of call to First Presbyterian Church. His gifts as an interim pastor are compatible with where First Presbyterian Church is right now. Church revitalization has been a dynamic in each of his calls. He and Mary Nell wish to be immersed in the life and people of First Presbyterian Church. The Bible verses that nurtured John both as a child and as an adult are John 3.16 and Romans 3.23. He believes the Bible is the inspired word of God and a guide to live our lives each day. John and Mary Nell, can you stand up? <clears throat> this is John and Mary Nell Stringer, and he will begin preaching September the 25th. Thank you. Also this morning, we would like to welcome Rachel and Greg McGehe, the new directors of Porch to Solomon in Pana Hachel in Guatemala. They will be presenting a they will be giving a presentation on this ministry, which we have been fortunate enough to participate in. Their presentation will give more information on this ministry and themselves. Thank you all very much and welcome. Everyone is invited to the reception following the service where you can get to know and speak with them. Thank you. Having a name that can be pronounced in two different ways and people usually pronounce it not the way that I pronounce it, um, please share the, how you pronounce your name later on because I've heard it in two different ways as well. But glad to have both of uh, couples here today. Last week I introduced uh, something that people have been questioning, what exactly is that? 
what is this thing called centering music? And it's merely just, a, just something short that gets us from the mundane of announcements. Mundane does not mean that they're unimportant. They're things that have to do with the life of the church, but then help us move into a time of worship. And last week, we began singing this one, uh, God Welcomes All. Well, today, you're going to be singing it with us. And I'll just give you a clue. Chris will sing it through once, then you'll have it memorized. Then we will sing it together with her. Then she will call us to sing Alleluia in place of those words, and then Amen in place of those words. So are you ready? With endless creativity, God forms and shapes our lives. Each of us bears the image of our maker. Each of us is made in love. Let us worship God. Let's pray. Eternal God, you have called us to be members of one body. Join us with those in all times and places who have praised your name, that with one heart and one mind, we may show the unity of your church and bring honor to our Savior and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand as able and join in singing here in this place.
Jesus calls us to follow him, knowing that the path is difficult and that sin lurks at every turn. Trusting in God's mercy, let us seek God's forgiveness, that we may follow more nearly in the way of Jesus. Let us pray. O oh God, you have given us a firm foundation in Jesus Christ, yet we have chosen to build on sinking sand. The works of our hands crumble around us, and our best efforts are not good enough. Sin is real, and we are powerless before it. Forgive us for thinking we know best. Men are broken values, and create in us hearts that seek your purposes, so that we may build with our lives, may give you glory. Amen. Jesus accompanies us on life's journey, offering abundant mercy and bountiful forgiveness along the way. This is good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us pray. Open our ears and humble our hearts as we approach your word read and proclaimed today. Great God, may we listen, discern, and follow the path you intend for us. Amen. The scripture today is from Psalm 100, a reading from the book of Psalms. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. When the Son of Man comes in glory and all his angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw that you were hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you that you were sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you have done it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. This morning we have a message, special message from uh, friends from Port de Solomon. So we invite you to come forward and share uh, your news. Are you going to show something first? Okay. Josefa Patsé and her four children were forced to move in with her parents after her abusive and alcoholic husband burned down their home and sold the land.
Coach Dave Solomon strives to partner with families helping children stay in school to break the cycle of poverty. Guatemala faces a high rate of chronic malnutrition. Chronically malnourished children are more susceptible to disease and infection, which in turn causes higher rates of infant and child mortality. Day Solomon serves some of the most severe malnourished communities on our feeding program, providing these families food bags with nutrient-rich foods. to Porch Day Solomon so he can answer all your questions. Um, but anyway, we are grateful. We're grateful for your support. So a little bit about us. I was a teacher for um, students with disabilities for 20 years, and Greg was a youth minister for 26 years. I know that seems impossible, but for 26 years at the same church, um, he was a youth minister. And we took youth on trips to different places, um, Mexico, Nicaragua, and then to Guatemala, where we found a heart and a passion for the indigenous Mayan in Guatemala. Um, so we wanted to move there and try to prepare our three children and tell them, okay, this could happen, we might be moving to Guatemala. And in that, God said, wait. And so we waited and waited and and waited. Getting a little discouraged, but finally, um, I was talking to Greg one day, walking to go shopping, and I said, do you ever think that we could possibly live in Panajachel, Guatemala? And he said, I do. And I said, do you ever think Lloyd and Melanie, who are the founders of um, Porch Day Solomon, do you ever think that they would think about us if they had to transition back to the United States? And he said, I have thought that. And then we went about our business and didn't say another word about it or talk to anyone about it. And then two weeks later, Lloyd, the founder, called us and said, I was woken up by God at about 4 o'clock this morning, and I thought, why have, and God said, why have you not thought of Greg and Rachel? So he called us immediately that morning and asked us if we would like to become the directors um, for Porch Day Solomon, and we said, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> 
because we have been waiting for that moment. So that's about us. And Greg's going to share with you a little bit. We ended up having a meeting with our children. And for those of you, they're not little kids. We didn't leave children in diapers at home. Um, they're right now, presently, they're 25, 23, and 21. Uh, but at that time, when we first started having those conversations with our children, our youngest was in middle school, almost going to high school. And she received that with tears when we told her that we're preparing for God to take us here in that period right before our waiting. And now they had grown up and they knew something was going on. They knew that we were having a conversation with Lloyd and Melanie. And so they were leaning in with their ears trying to catch what was going on. And so we had a meeting. And the most beautiful thing came from our son, Ryland. He is our oldest of three. He said, to say no to this, mom and dad, is disobedience. And so as, as we journeyed along, and it's been a two and a half year transition to this position, um, we continue to look back and say, to say no is disobedience. There's times when things seem to be wonderful and we're so excited about what the Lord is doing. And there's times when things are really, really tough and hard. And we might question ourselves of why are we here? What are we doing? Why did we leave what we knew? And that's the way of the Lord is it's faith. It is a journey. And you have to, like in the Old Testament, you have to put a memorial when he showed up that you can remember that day. When he showed up, when he provided, when he stepped in. And so that's what our journey of faith has been like. It's uh, brand new. We are fledglings in this role. Lloyd and Melanie, God made them in such a beautiful way to found an organization that we fell in love with. Like we came just like MJ. We came with teams. We were bringing teams and we fell in love with this ministry and God used them. But then as they stepped in, I believe God has prepared us for this day, that we will take that baton and we will continue to move forward and to grow with the ministry. And so that's where we are here today. And you saw the video. In the video, you saw a lot of the things that we do, and that's helping people. And we help people in the name of our Lord, that they can know that he is good and he is a provider. And so just having you to partner with us is an absolute blessing. In James, it teaches us about what true religion is. It's helping the orphans and the widows. And a lot of what Porch Day Solomon does is very much that. One of the homes you saw that we just built this summer is the house of Olga. Olga's a single mother. Her husband has abandoned her, left her and her five children with nothing was not even helping them to, to eat, not having adequate shelter. Imagine not having a government that's gonna come in beside you and help you. And that's when we stepped in. And the reason we were able to step in is for people like you that partner with us, that help us to have the resources to then go in God's name and love on them and deliver them hope. You saw that in the video. Without hope, where are we? And so God uses the ministry of Porsche Solomon and people here in the United States to either financially support, go with us, or both. And also in James, we are taught that we are to not be just hearers of the word, but doers. And that's where the challenge came for us. We didn't know what God's plan was, but we knew that we needed to be ready, always ready, and looking to him for that next call. Lord, what is the next yes? I was reading in Matthew 16, and in Matthew 16, Peter was the one that told Jesus, you are the Messiah. You are the Messiah, and he was applauded for that. But if you go down just a little bit further down, and I'm going to read a couple scriptures to you. My old age is caught up with me. Let me take my eyes out. Forgive me. Just a few verses down, Jesus was talking about how he was about to die. And this was not in the disciples' plans. They thought that he was going to be an earthly king and he was going to help free them and give them this great place on earth. 
And so Jesus is now talking about his death. And so Peter, thinking he's doing right, because don't we all? When we start to act, we think we're doing right. In verse 22 of Matthew 16, Peter took him aside and he began to rebuke him. And he said, never, Lord. Some translations say, no, Lord. Those two words should never go together. Because if he is Lord, who are we to tell him what is right or what is wrong? And so he said to him, never, Lord, this shall never happen to you. In verse 23, Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their crosses and follow me. What was in the past was a few verses up when he says, you are the Messiah. And that was a, a, a mountaintop experience. It's like he's getting applauded, but all of a sudden he's in a new place. Very quickly thereafter saying no to his Lord. And that is what has pushed Rachel and I to be where we are today. We're not deserving, but we just postured ourselves to say yes to God. We said yes to him yesterday, but that's the past. God, what is the yes that you have for us today? And that's my challenge to this church, to this body of believers. Let's not hold on too dearly to the past because God has given us this day. And so my answer is yes, Lord, yes, Yes, yes. Now, what is it that you're asking? The posture is a yes before we even know the call. Because he truly is the Lord. And that's, I have bracelets, so when we have our time together later, I'd love for you to consider taking a bracelet. I put one on last September. It sits on my wrist right now. It reminds me when I wake up. God, this is a new day. This is a day you have given me. It's a gift. May I not live in my past. May I live today to say yes to you. What are you calling me to do? I have no idea what the Lord might call you to do, whether it's being involved with Forest Day Solomon. We would love that. We believe in the ministry that we're a part of. We believe in our staff, our full Guatemalan staff that serves the lost, the least, and the last. For us to come alongside them is such a joy. And we would love for you to come alongside of us even, even more so come in person. We host teams. We just hosted a whole summer of teams. We have our own hotel. We take care of the food and your transportation. All you have to do is say yes. Or maybe it's a financial partnership. I don't, I don't know. There's, you can sponsor a family in their education. You can sponsor a house build in honor of somebody who has gone before you. There's so many ways that you can get involved. But I just encourage you to say yes to God and let him speak to you. Don't let it be me. I might lead you in a direction that might be good, but it might not be God's great. We don't want to miss his great by busying ourselves by doing what we think is good. So thank you so much. I look forward to meeting you more in person. Thank you for allowing us to be here. We're humbled to be here with you today. Thank you for sharing with us your ministry and uh, God's direction in your lives. Uh, we are all invited to a time, of, a special time of fellowship following the service. And as you may have noticed, as you came in to this morning out in the Northex, there was a table there with an offering plate. And we invite you to uh, share abundantly as you can with the, their ministry as uh, they go forward in serving the Lord. Would you please rise now and let us uh, sing together when we were living? when we are living.
Let us profess what we believe, saying, We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. In sovereign love, God created the world good and made everyone equally in God's image, male and female, of every race and people, to live as one community. But we rebel against God. We hide from our Creator. Ignoring God's commandments, we violate the image of God in others and ourselves. Accept lies as truth, exploit neighbor and nature, and threaten death to the planet entrusted to our care. We deserve God's condemnation, yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation. In everlasting love, the God of Abraham and Sarah chose a covenant people to bless all families of the earth. Hearing their cry, God delivered the children of Israel from the house of bondage. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant. Like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome the prodigal home, God is faithful still. You may be seated. We have more to offer than we recognize or we realize. God has given us abundant gifts, and let us faithfully respond to our generous God by presenting our tithes, our offerings, and our lives. Let us pray. Holy God, take these gifts and bless them for the good use to your glory. May the, these tokens of our gratitude be of service in blessing the poor, feeding the hungry, clothing and sheltering those struggling to survive. Use these gifts to further Christ's mission and ministry in a hurting world. Amen. humble offering, a few loaves, a couple of fish, and it was sufficient. Jesus took these simple gifts, asked God to bless them, and gave them to the people, and they were nourished. It was enough. It was more than enough. More than 5,000 fed and 12 baskets of leftovers. Out of that amazing abundance, we too are fed. This is Christ's table. Our Savior invites all of you who place your trust in him to come and share in this meal, for it is a holy meal offered to a holy people. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks. It is indeed right for you, for you, O God, have made us. And before us you made the world we inhabit. And before the world you made the eternal home in which through Christ we have a place. All that is spectacular and all that is plain have their origin in you. All that is lovely and all who are loving point to you as their fulfillment. And grateful as we are for the world we know, in the universe beyond our understanding, we particularly praise you whom eternity cannot contain for coming to earth and entering time in Jesus. For his life, which informs our living, for his compassion, which changes our hearts, for, for his clear speaking, which contradicts our generalities, for his disturbing presence, his innocent suffering, his fearless dying, his rising to life and breathing forgiveness. 
we praise you and worship him. Here too our gratitude rises for the promise of the Holy Spirit, who even yet, even now, confronts us with your claims and attracts us to your goodness. And now, lest we believe that our praise alone fulfills our, your purpose, we fall silent and remember him who came because words weren't enough. Setting our wisdom, our will, our words aside, emptying our hearts and bringing nothing in our hands. We yearn for the healing, the holding, the accepting, the forgiving that Christ alone can offer. Merciful God, send now in kindness your Holy Spirit to make, to make this our sharing in this bread and this cup, a sharing in Christ's body and blood and let that same spirit rest on us, converting us from the patterns of this passing world until we conform to the image of him whose food we now share. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us all to pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of Jesus' rest, he took bread, and lifted it up and gave thanks to God for this bread. And then Jesus said, Take, eat. This my body is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant, shed in my blood for your forgiveness. Drink all of it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. And he will. Those who are serving, please come forward. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come and receive.
Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and this cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, make, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the whole world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Please stand as able for our closing hymn, I Come With Joy. Now go out into the world to love and serve, and may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and always. Amen. Oh,